Welcome friends to a new game analysis in my Road to Class A series. And uh, this is round two of our Spring Swiss at the Waukesha Chess Club. We're playing a game, a classical game in 100, game in 100, uh, with a delay of five. We do not play with increment at our club, mainly because people, since the club weekday is on a Wednesday, they do not want to have people that would be, um, how do you say, uh, spending all time, all the time building up time at the end, trying to keep playing so that there needs to be a definite ending to the game, which is why we play with delay of five, which is no problem at all, but um, interesting to play. So I am playing, I'm 1651 currently, round one, I beat Clark McCutcheon, I beat a 1900, and I'm playing a new player to the club who's been around for a, a few months and I haven't had a chance to play him yet. I'm playing Ben Kearns. Actually, no, we have played him one time. Uh, so this will be my second game with him. We've played Kearns before. And if I remember correctly, yeah, I was white and he had played a... Actually, cannot remember. I'm looking back here. Yeah, he, uh, he played knight c6 to start with. So he was black last time we played. And he was 14 then, so he's 17, 12 right now. So from the time that we played him last until now, which was a few months back, he is now, he's gained like 300 points. Now he's in his provisional rating, so we don't really know where he's sitting, but he's, I believe, above me on chess.com as far as ratings are concerned. So he's probably near my strength uh, at, at a minimum. If not, he's probably higher. So let's take a look. Uh, so this, I believe, is going to be a really good game, and I was really excited to play him. So I am playing e4 still, and he play opted for a Karo Khan. Now, I'll be fair. I did prepare for this game. I knew I was playing him, and the parents did not change, and I knew that he was going to be playing a Karo Khan. And the version, or the variation, that we were going to get was a Tartakower. And I was very excited to see this on the board. And I thought, oh, great. So I prepped for this particular variation. And I was really, really excited because I worked uh, on some lines. And I worked with my training partner and to try to figure out the best way to go. And here I played in a, an odd move order. Now, this is a move order that can be played. It's not in my opening course. Uh, at least not this particular move order. But my thought was I'm going to develop my queen side very quickly and get castled and then play for the king side because the king side is going to be where black castles right away. So the idea is get castled early and then kind of play for g4, g5. And this is my plan. So he plays bishop to d6, pretty standard. Bishop to... Uh, d3 now I'm showing that okay he blocked coming in here but he's not a, I'm not exactly showing my hand yet where I could still potentially castle queenside so he castles and now I play queen to d2 and prepare for castling now he played bishop to g4 where we talked about this in the game we don't think that this is the most ideal way to play the bishop should probably just hang out there or play hang out here or develop to here with the idea of this particular maneuver and we talked about how this scenario could have happened and then if i trade you get the infamous pawn cube which he said he has seen before and very familiar with i had no thoughts of playing that way whatsoever uh, i did consider uh, f3 uh, which I don't believe is all that good of a move because then we get the same type of situation and I really didn't want his bishop coming in here so I played for development I played knight f3 and if he takes it which is what actually happens in the game at some point we get this scenario and now I've got this open file to his king and this to me is great so I can just march his pawn down the board and attack whatever's here and 
we've got my bishops pointing this way, my queens pointing this way. When I get castled, I'll have my rook this way. And this is just, to me, is great for for white. And this is the plan. So I'm like, well, go ahead. Take my, take my knight. If you want to take it, that's fantastic. He played rook to e8. Pretty standard because you want to maneuver your knight back around here. I get my castling queenside in. And he plays knight to d7. And at this point, I'm like, okay, I've gotten everything I want so far. So stage one is complete. I finished my development. I got castle queenside. I got my pieces on all the squares that I want. And now I can start pushing for this idea of g4 and g5 to disrupt this kingside. Because right now, he's only got one, potentially two pieces defending his king, along with these four pawns. So I played e th or h3, and he peeled my knight off, which I expected. And now I get exactly what I wanted, which is this open file, open g file. So now I have all these threats against the king. h4, he played h5, which I believe is probably a mistake. He probably should have brought his knight in to try to get any type of scenario in front of his king or something like that. And h5. And here I played rook d to g1, and it says it's a mistake. Why it's a mistake, I don't really understand. It wants me to play f4, f5, and then get this type of scenario. But I don't really understand why it shows that it's a mistake. It's probably just because that I have better moves, which is f4, f5. Bishop takes f5, but like... If I play f4, is he really going to play f5 and just give me that pawn? That's really weird and very computery. It's not like any type of real, uh, like, he's gonna, you're going to play f5 and just give that pawn up for free? Uh, it kind of doesn't make a lot of sense from a human's standpoint. Now, there's probably reasons as to why you want to do this, but uh, it, it gives you a free square for your queen to come. But if you follow the line, it doesn't, your queen doesn't go there. So, you know, instead of doing that, why wouldn't you just go here instead of giving the pawn up? I'm not quite sure about any of this stuff. So it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. If you guys have ideas as to why this line is better, uh, I would love to hear them. Maybe you guys can understand this. I don't see the Tartakower all that much, and I don't know a lot of the plans. So being that I'm new to being an e4 player this doesn't make a lot of sense because you're blocking in your bishop and potentially blocking in your next bishop so like why why would you do this because you're when you play f4 this is a super weird move to make because now your your bishop has no squares at all so it's just really weird it doesn't make a lot of sense anyways i'm playing more logically as far as a human would consider, and I'm like, well, I'm gonna line up on the king because uh, now now there's threats, you know, uh, which he has to deal with. He played a5, which I believe he just wants to try to uh, expand on the queen side and get maybe a5, b5, and start these pawns rolling, but it's really slow. So the whole idea of playing the way that I've played is that all of my pieces contact the king much faster than all of these pawns trying to play on the queen side. And I think it's very, very nuanced and very difficult to play if you play in this way. But what I think he what I was hoping he was going to do was was this, and then this would happen. And I was expecting this type of line. And then we would maybe trade off, or I would I didn't see this particular move, but I saw this variation and this is the whole engine line i didn't see this i saw it to here and i thought well okay um i don't know if i like that that much and i didn't see this all this extra stuff though so really weird but very computery he played uh, a5 and here i want to play f4 and i know i had talked about blocking this bishop in but I'm not expecting him to play f5 because it just gives me the free pawn. So I'm thinking when he plays queen c7, which he does, then I can just play f5. And now I've blocked in this knight and 
I feel as though I've got this really good uh, position and I feel as though uh, everything's going my way yeah I blocked in this but I've got these threats coming now and uh, I can even bring my bishop here and come after this pawn so I am contacting the king and I've got an attack going I play he plays c5 which to me was a very good move I, I thought well he's causing complications I have to do something about this uh, and I thought well I should probably get off this file and looking at it now I've got time I don't actually have to do that I could just take it and I didn't really consider taking it in the game and I didn't consider any type of move like that because to me that was just silly and this also looks silly so like I didn't really consider I kind of dismissed some of these moves now I should be looking for these moves so in this game I did miss some of this stuff and giving up exchanges and things like that is just kind of odd to want to do unless you have some sort of concrete like main in attack or some other scenario now if you look at the position at the end of this line it's really tough to think that black has any type of chance at this point like why would you go for this um, you're essentially down an entire rook for no reason so yeah weird stuff and I thought well I can take that but I played a little bit safer which is why it shows a dubious move and he took and here I did not think that this was a blunder and it is because it shows there's a, a drastic two point change 2.7 change in the evaluation so I've actually given him back so I'm at plus five right now with that move but it's like plus 2.1 if I take it but to me this is a logical move because now I have some very extremely difficult threats to deal with and how do you deal with everything that's coming here um, I don't know how you would handle all of this and to me this just felt like the best move and they say the better move is just straight up going for going for it right away and getting this and I did miss this uh, or I did consider this particular um, line I did not consider him bringing the bishop in like that and I did not consider him bringing in the knight like that so I didn't see some of those things as blockaders but I mean that just gives up pieces right so uh, th these all make logical sense uh, it's just this is very difficult for black to deal with now black has to figure this all out as a human not as a engine so it's really hard so I took the pawn and I thought well I'm just gonna get the pawn and he still has all of these particular uh, issues to deal with and he played king h8 uh, what he should have played here was knight to d7 which I expected him to play to you know kind of gain some counterplay here and I would try to line up like this I saw this and I was expecting for this um, and then owning this particular diagonal so none of that happened though he played king h8 and here I took this way um, I have a more accurate way of playing which is this because can you see it if yeah I mean that's a tough move to find I don't think he's finding that but if he takes here we get this and uh, it's checkmate so you can't do that so yeah you got to do something which is getting off there and then going back but it's very hard to not I mean this is just a devastating attack it's really hard to to deal with he took uh, I 
kept this pin here. He moved his king, uh, or blocked with his knight. And I played bishop takes, attacking his king. He moved back. And it's checkmate in two from there. I'm sure you can work that out. Uh, and he moved back here and here. So that's how the game would have ended. Um, at After he moved back, he resigned at this point. So yeah, uh, a pretty strong attack. Uh, very difficult to deal with. Uh, yeah, I did have a blunder here. So it's not my most accurate game ever. Um, actually shows 85%. So that's still really good. Uh, if you're playing 85% and you've got under 50 uh, pawn loss, that's really, really good. So um, could I have played this a little bit better? Yes. Uh, to me, I know that this shows as a blunder, but I don't I don't really believe it because uh, the best move doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Like, I mean, this makes sense to do, but it's still really, really tough to deal with. And I don't know exactly how you are going to stop all of this from happening. Uh, I even have this and this. It, I mean, it's pretty crude, but it works too. Black obviously gets moves, but it, it's really hard to deal with. All of my pieces are pointing this way. Uh, this pawn, I can always have this sacrifice. This queen's coming in. And it doesn't matter how quickly black comes in this way. Uh, I'm making contact with the king first. So this was a pretty devastating attack and very, very difficult to deal with. I had a really nice post-mortem with Ben and he thought his entire game fell apart after this move. I'm not so sure. Um, I think that this is still playable. I think what he should have maybe done here was after playing h4 was playing for this. And even if I come in, he can still always take back this way. It's still tough to deal with, but I believe it's easier to deal with in this particular fashion. Um, I can come in here and take his knight, but, you know, if I start trading pieces off and I haven't broken through, uh, I could easily mess this attack up. I thought something like this might be a little bit more ideal. Um, also, instead of moving the knight there, I thought maybe playing for this. Uh, let's say I play here and playing for this and bringing the knight in this way was also a potential uh, way to play. It also gives you an opportunity to bring your queen in. I don't know that this is good or bad, but I felt like there was some better opportunities here to maybe play some defense, but tough to say. I don't know. What do you guys think? Was there a better way to play defense for my opponent uh, or... And was there a better way that I could have had a stronger attack? Uh, to me, I thought I played this pretty well, and uh, I thought it was a pretty, pretty tough to deal with. So uh, if you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to leave a like and uh, leave some comments. It really helps me out each time uh, you guys engage with my videos. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Take care.